Well, we're definitely going to talk about robot electricity with Chris Abel this week. Innovation Cafe is brought to you by Kobo Open Up, but we're starting with the Candid Catmara app. <laughs> really? Yeah. So this is an app that helps your cat take selfies. And the, initially the way it works is that you open the app on your iPad, your iPhone, and it uses all these lures. It creates the sound of treats being shook or puts fish <laughs> on the screen. And when your cat comes over, then it secretly starts to take a series of photographs. Jen Matei from Halifax talks about the really cool technology behind this. It automatically takes a series of photos and analyzes the characteristics of the subject and then only saves the ones that are cats to your gallery. So if your cat's at home playing with the iPad, it can then save the images it takes of itself and they'll go to your phone while you're not even there. We affectionately refer to it as feline facial recognition. People, their first question is, well, why don't we do it for dogs? Well, it's actually a little trickier because dogs all have very different characteristics, whereas cats all have fairly similar characteristics. So that really helped while building up our database of characteristics that are tracked. Like if I put my face up to it, it might take a photo, but it won't save the photo because after it goes into the cat recognition sort of filter, it'll define that I am not a cat. (laughs) There you go. It's a cat-only app. There you go. It's a cat-only app, but I have a dog and a cat. (laughs) Well, the good news is it uh, costs $2.79. It's available only for the iPhone and the iPad. Android is coming. But if you buy it, $1 goes towards the SPCA who is involved in testing the app. That's wonderful. I'm a huge advocate for animal welfare. And for me, this sort of hits me on both sides. Like professionally, what an incredible piece of technology while doing something wonderful for the cats as well. The video that we shot is with all of the SPC animals. So those are all cats and kittens that at the time were definitely in need of homes. But we spent a couple of days with them testing out the app and shooting the video. And what I found pretty exciting was that they actually really enjoyed playing with the app. They're real moments of a cat interacting with a toy, for lack of a better term, and they're actually looking at the toys. So there's no other factors that affect their personalities or the behavior. I think they're completely honest, unobstructed, which I think is really quite a wonderful thing. That's awesome. I, I think I like the idea. I may have to get the app. Now, you also have a perfect tale for the holidays, the wish tree. Tell us about that. Yeah, this is by a Toronto-based author, Kyle McClear. And it's a beautiful book about a little boy named Charlie who believes that there is a wish tree, but none of his friends believe him. So he heads out with his best friend, Boggin, his toboggan, to go out into the woods, and he has a series of encounters as he looks for this very special tree. I was sent a picture by an illustrator who works actually in animation, and he had done a really beautiful image of a a young boy with a toboggan by a, a tree in the forest, and I was asked if I could create a story to go with the image. And I'd never worked that way before, but the image kind of seeded itself in my mind and I started to think about it and I was asking questions about who this boy might be and what his quest might be and I realized that I wanted to write a story that would be a kind of festive story that would kind of celebrate the values of the holidays like community or giving or altruism or sharing without being tied to a particular tradition. So I wanted to create something non-denominational and that was partly because I feel like the schools are full of kind of the default Christmas, you know, stories and songs. And I wanted to create a story that could be accessible to all families where kids could even invite a tradition like making a wish tree in the classroom or something that wouldn't feel like overly Christian or overly anything, really. And of course, I asked her, given the holidays, if she had a really cool book to recommend. Such a tough question for me because I love books so much. And I decided that I just mention a writer, John Berger, and he's started off as an art historian, but he's actually a really eclectic writer. He's kind of non-categorical in the sense that he always jumps fences, so he'll start off talking about art, but then he'll end up talking about European peasant history. Or, But anyway, he, when I was an art history student, he really taught me that beyond ways of, uh, beyond seeing, there's actually ways of seeing, that we look at the world in certain ways, and that there were often other ways of looking at things. 
Thank you very much, Chris. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to all. And Chris Abel's Innovation Cafe is brought to you by Kobo. Open up. Kobo makes it easier to access the stories you love and discover new ones in an instant. Over 5 million ebooks, a personalized reading experience, and points earned with every purchase. Visit kobo.com today and open up.